All right, guys, so I'm here in New Jersey with uh, Kwame Safo. I'm sure most of you uh, read online or saw the video with him and Steve Harvey. And uh, I think one thing that has been in the minds of people, the big story for most people back home in Ghana, is the fact that it was written as uh, you went from being homeless to uh, being able to pay off your debt and yeah. then also becoming a, a sensational person online. Okay. Uh, take us through how that happened. First of all, what do, when you say homeless, is it because in the minds of people, a homeless person is somebody sleeping on the street in the box, mm -hmm. or is that your case? Uh, that wasn't my case. Mm -hmm. My case was a little differently. Uh, mine was, in a sense, it was a little, it was a temporary situation. Mm -hmm. uh, even when the story went on Steve, they edited my story to make it more, to, res uh, to res resonate with more people. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, it was just a temporary homelessness because I was too prideful. Mm -hmm. uh, just to give a quick little backstory, around 23, after I paid off my debt, I went to Philadelphia to try to get either a full-time job or pursue something better. Uh, it didn't work out, so I had to settle for an internship. And during that time, I, that's when I started to take my modeling more seriously. Uh, the agency that I was talking to, they said, um, you know, you have the skills, you have the look, we like you know, that you're Ghanaian in the background, but we need you um, to put a little more into it. So they said I had to invest some more money into building my brand. So in a sense, I took all the money I had in my checkings and my savings account to push it towards a modeling career because I really felt that I would be fruitful in that field. Unfortunately, the company went under and it didn't work out and my money was basically gone. So the pride really wouldn't let me go back home. I decided when I was going to pursue the modeling, I just had to go all into it. I couldn't think about it sometimes, especially uh, being um, first generation, our parents say you have three choices, doctor, mm -hmm. lawyer, engineer. And I felt like that wasn't the case for me. So I decided if I'm going to do this, I'm not going to tell anyone, I'm just going to jump in and hopefully the results will be great. Unfortunately, it didn't happen like that. So when I didn't have anything in my checkings or accounting or anything like that, I couldn't ask for help. It was honestly just a pride. Yeah, because uh, the reason why I wanted clarification is when I posted that story, one of my uncles, like, I know him, his, uh, his parents are ABC, they have this store, yeah. and so it's no tr it cannot be possible that he, mm. he, 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 that's why I wanted that clarification. So how did you turn around in, able to, in that space to be able to clear your, uh, your debt? Uh, the debt was uh, unable to pay the whole debt. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, it was just from working. Uh, working at the store, working at Robert Wood Johnson, Morristown Medical Center, uh, Yoon Patton. I was also at uh, John Hopkins, just all those years of working. I started working at 12. And one thing that I'm glad my dad told me is just to keep saving. No matter what it is, just save it. So sometimes when people buy um, Jordans or whatever the case is, they buy flaunty things. I'm buying Nikes or Reeboks, whatever the case is, something just to sustain you not to really show off so thankfully at 23 I had enough money in the account to just pay everything off so I decided let me just pay it off and start my life afresh at 23 basically no debts master's degree and like the world is the world is my oyster oyster Good. so what are you currently doing beyond the modeling in terms of your, your own business what, what also do you do? right now I still have the uh, West African original Kanesha I'm still working there I'm also starting my next business uh, it's gonna be called Kanesha Foods it's gonna be that's from the family. Uh, it's gonna, it's in a sense, it's within the West African community, but it's gonna be separate from the family business. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna cater to West Africans and also Caribbeans in another, another facet, mainly the uh, fast food. I don't want to say fast food, but the prepared cooked foods industry. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that that's something that's buzzing. People mm -hmm. really aren't into it. But uh, from my personal observation, I've noticed that I don't want to. It's all my generation, time. but my generation, sometimes we don't cook as much and we like things fast. So I've noticed that that's one market that hasn't really been touched. And I've seen that Patel Brothers have done it for the Indian community. So I want to bring that over for the Ghanaian, West African and Caribbean community. Besides that, I'm also trying to do more philanthropic work. I'm working with Barringer High School. We have a monthly food pantry. Uh, as you saw, Steve Harvey was able to raise 5000 for us, and we're looking to actually raise 4000 within the next three weeks because of all the publicity and press, so we're thankful for that. Mm -hmm. So those are my main two options, the um, new business I'm starting, as well as the philanthropic work that I'm getting into. It seems like a handful. How do you get time to stay fit but, oh. and, <laughs> I mean, give people these, your, uh, your videos? Uh, all this. Uh, alongside modeling. Are you still doing the modeling, right? I'm still doing modeling, yeah. So how do you manage it? 
uh, it all just comes down to time management. Mm -hmm. um, I really believe that sometimes we just make the excuse that we know it's going to be hard, so we say I can't or I don't have. But if you really sit down and map out how you spend your time during the day, you could, you can do it. Uh, for example, I start my day at 4:30, and some people think I'm crazy, and <laughs> it's understandable. But I do it in such a way that 4:30 I start the day. I just say a quick little prayer. I look at what I have to do. Five o'clock, I'm in the gym. So by 6:30. I've worked out, I've read, I've ate, I've got dressed, I'm ready for work. Essentially, I've done more than some people can do in their day. You know, sometimes after work you're tired, you can't go to the gym, you can't do X, Y, Z. But I've noticed that if I wake up early, I have more time to do things that I need to do for myself, things I need to do for uh, my business, excuse my business, for my job, because I do work nine to five. And then the after hours are for my uh, friends, family, things like that. But it's really just time management. Like if you think you can do it and you actually sit down and map the time out, it's going to work over a progressive amount of time. So uh, in terms of fitness, which is one of your big assets yep. in terms of uh, your online presence, uh, uh, how did you get into it? Uh, why do you love it? And if you should give uh, five short tips for people who want to five keep fit, tips, yeah, yeah. what would that be? So fitness, uh, I, I love it. I started at 19. I got injured playing basketball in Florida. I was trying to get a scholarship. Didn't work out. So once I got injured, I decided, well, let me use my athletic ability in another facet. At first, when I started with fitness, I won't lie, I didn't like it. I was kind of shy and embarrassed because um, I couldn't, I could only lift the barbell. So it was very, it was shocking, but I stuck with it. And as you keep going, you get stronger. People notice it. You feel better. Build your self-confidence. And since that day, I'm glad I've stuck with it. The past seven years, I'm still doing it. I'm going to do this until I can't anymore. For anyone trying to get into fitness, I would say do it, not only for the fact that it makes you stronger, but it also helps build your self-confidence. And also in this day and age, we do, obesity is increasing. So we really want to make sure that we're going to be there for our children, for our great-grandchildren, and just live a better life. Five tips, drink a lot of water. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Uh, this third tip is catered towards West Africans. I know sometimes the foods we eat, like fufu, yam, barrier board, like all that, we do eat a lot of fatty foods. So if we're going to, if you have to eat it, eat it earlier in the day. Uh, one thing my grandfather did, he never ate after 4.30. So if you want to eat heavy foods, fufu, jollof rice, whatever the case is, eat it early in the day so at least you can work it off. Uh, tip four, you have to stay consistent. If you start the program and after a week, you start to waver, you start to give up, or like, mm, like I'm not feeling it, mm, yeah, whatever the case is, it's not gonna I've work. Been there. Yeah, like the pain, <laughs> as long as you can still function, just, just go through the pain. Sometimes the pain, you may be like, oh, I feel it. Mm -hmm. It's just your body getting stronger. So just fight through it unless you really hurt yourself and you go to a doctor. But if not, just keep pushing. Good. I also read one of the head. Oh, your last oh, tip, yeah. Uh, my last tip. Uh, it's just with anything in life. It's going to be hard, mm -hmm. but if you just work towards it, small steps, go to the gym once a week, twice a week, three times a week, you'll be okay. Good. Uh, I was, one of the headlines I read was uh, that you're representing or you're competing in Titans game. Was that? Oh, yeah. So uh, The Rock or Dwayne Johnson, the uh, big acting yeah. guy, he did um, Titan games. Basically, he was looking for people from all works of life, whether you be an accountant, fireman, um, oh, oh, yeah. dishwasher, whatever the case is. He wanted people with diverse backgrounds to come to compete in a fitness sport. It was looking for the average person who always thought that they could do something great. And I was very fortunate. I applied. I saw it on uh, Instagram. I applied. You know, At first, I was like, well, <laughs> I don't know if I'll make it, but I can do push-ups and I have a nice personality, so maybe he'll like me. And they told us that 60 people were selected out of 100,000 applicants. And there was only two Ghanaians, I believe, cool. uh, me and Amma. So I was actually fortunate. Uh, we didn't win, but it was definitely nice to represent Ghana, represent the culture, and just Good. bring awareness. And talking about Ghana, you were born here or you were born in Ghana? I was born here. Good. And what's your relationship with Ghana like? Do you go off? Ghana, I love Ghana. I try to go every two years. It used to be every year, but uh, once you start the 9 to 5 and mm -hmm. you start getting older, college, all these responsibilities, it's Close doing time. it a little bit, but... When what, was the last time you went? Last time was 2016. Okay, and what, what, is, what, what do you remember most about that experience? Uh, most about that? I only stayed for about a week and a half, but I liked it because I just visited my cousins, uh, my, not my grandparents, but my cousins, <laughs> my older aunts and uncles. 
I got to spend time in Kumasi. That's where my family's from. That's all we know. I was in Accra for two days. It was beautiful. And I, was, I really just like the way Ghana or Ghana's just building up in general, like the business, the technology, every single aspect, the music. Now in America, if you turn on the radio, you're going to hear um, Davido or Wizkid, which is incredible because uh, growing up here or just even growing up, you would never hear anything. The closest to African music you would hear is maybe Caribbean music. Mm -hmm. And even with that, they would play it a few times. Now, turn on the radio, you hear Davido, Wizkid, Skepta, and it's, it's beautiful. Just not enough Ghanaian artists, but we're coming. <laughs> we're coming soon. But And maybe even with your uh, Kanishi, uh, if it becomes a, a chain of food, uh, it might come back home. Yes, well. I would love it. I actually had that idea. I wanted to, I wanted to do a Kanishi chain the same way Patel Brothers has mm -hmm. Patel Patel Brothers has their chains all over. I want to do that one day soon for Kanishi. So if anyone out there who wants to partner up, maybe has the funds or the knowledge, let's do it. Let's link up because Ghana, just Africa in general, we're doing great. There's still more for us to do, but we're doing a great job and let's just keep going. Great, all right. So uh, final words, anything you have to say uh, to the world? <laughs> final words mm, to the world, whew. <laughs> Guys, whatever you wanna do, just do it. Even if you can't do it at one time, just break it into small steps. If you wanna start a business, plan it out, map it out, vision it, plan it, and then just execute it. I know sometimes we may be busy, we may not have time to do things, or people may say you can't do X, Y, Z, but if you really want to do it, you can do it. Just envision it, write it out, and just execute it. That's all it is. I'm not saying I'm the richest person, I'm not the most <laughs> famous person, but before all this publicity, Steve Harvey, Ellen, The Rock, Pickler, and Ben, I was just a regular person too, and I said one day, I want to be on TV, I want to be able to touch people, I want to motivate people, and I want to be able to give back to my community. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I just had the vision. I started writing small notes in my little um, note notebook, just writing little jots, jotlets, whatever it was, and then today here I am, and this is not the end. It's going to keep going forward. Thanks, and all the best to keep an eye out for thank you. you. Thank you, thank you.